And now, your feature presentation. In a world of big budget blockbusters, travel back in time to explore the epic and not so epic movies of yesteryear. This is On Second Watch, a movie nostalgia podcast. Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of On Second Watch. And I know I say that every time, but this time's a little bit different because normally we review movies from our past, but this time we get a chance to review a movie that just came out. I'm going to introduce you to 2021's British black comedy horror mockumentary, When the Screaming Starts. And my name is Tim, and joining me are our resident horror experts, emphasis on the horror, Chris and Dan. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a horror. (laughs) God damn it. Making a note to save that clip again. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. And then on the total opposite end of that spectrum, we have Dana and Nikki. <laughs> hey, um, not not fans of the horror genre very much, but. And then uh, it's safe to say you're you're an occasional horror fan, right, Carrie? Yeah, I'm in the middle. That's not an occasional, right. not an occasional, occasional horror, horror fan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever goes. Oh my god. <laughs> She's an, enthousi- She's- an enthusiastic She's- meh. Yeah, she- that's, She's that's your high that. priced horror. Just high quality. Yes. Only high quality. She's your <laughs> Vegas horror? No, that is not high quality. <laughs> Come on now. That's like the opposite. Art. I mean, got to spend some money on them somewhere. Nah, we're, we're not going to go there today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'm going to let the power of Descript AI introduce you to this film and the key cast and crew. So take it away, movie voice guy. Insert movie voice guy. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Tim. Inspired by the modern day obsession with serial killers and true crime documentaries, When the Screaming Starts turns this popular subgenre on its head. Whilst questioning the contemporary fascination with serial slaughter, this fresh new mockumentary examines the dark subject matter through a comedic lens, resulting in a pitch black horror comedy that will have you laughing and wincing in equal measure. Directed by Connor Boru, who co-wrote the screenplay with Ed Hartland, both producers of this film alongside Jared Rogers and Dom Lenoir, cinematographer Adrian Musto, editor Alan Ray, sound by Paul Catton, and composer Michael Palmer, starring Ed Hartland, Jared Rogers, Caitlin Raynell, Octavia Gilmore, Jason Adur, Kave Niku, Rania Hog Holt, and Var Hog Holt. Now back to the On Second Watch crew. Jump cut! Thanks, movie voice guy. <laughs> uh, so for my fellow podcasters out there, that entire monologue by our movie voice guy was done completely in Descript using their AI overdub. I use Descript for all our post-production. Basically, it makes it a lot easier for me because I'm just editing a document because of all the transcripts. So if you're interested in Descript, go to oswpodcast.com slash Descript and try it out today. So when the screaming starts, Rotten Tomatoes has this film at a 100%. IGN says it's an 8 out of 10. IMDb says it's a 5.5. But again, there's only a handful of reviews on either one of these sites. So honestly, the only true measurement that matters is ours. Ours. So take that. Special shout out to Jared and the whole team at When the Screaming Starts for allowing us to screen this movie. This is our first chance to get to do something like this, so it was kind of cool to take a look at this film. But let's jump in and kind of go around our virtual table here and share our thoughts on what we thought this movie was going to be going into it, what we got out of it, and give a score out of 10. Spaz, we don't normally start out with you. Why don't you go first? I thought this was going to be kind of... Well, I didn't really know what it was going to be like because I didn't read too much about anything about it so when you said mockumentary i kind of took me to what was that uh 
the mask of Leslie Vernon or whatever that was. Wow, Chris. if you're gonna if you're gonna butcher a movie I enjoy, why don't you <laughs> completely do it? Uh, what's well, what's it's it called? It, it's behind the behind mask, the mask, the rise of Leslie Vernon. Yeah, so I thought it was gonna be something like along the lines of that. Because I also like the movie, but I've only seen it the one time when Chris showed it to me, I think 10 years ago. So that's why I couldn't remember the name of the movie, you ass. <laughs> it was a slow start to a movie, I guess. I, I kind of I kind of fell asleep during the first maybe 20 minutes. I was oh. kind of on and off of sleep. And then it kind of caught my attention. After that, it started picking up. I would say they did a decent job with this. It was a good movie, though. It was, it was decent. It's a good watch. I would recommend this movie to somebody. Maybe get some good sleep before watching it. But uh, <laughs> I'd give a six, six for me. A flat six. Yeah. Nikki. Did you get the chance to finish it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> I watched it this morning. I also went to a mockumentary I had already seen, which is Spinal Tap. I was like, oh, maybe it'll be kind of like Spinal Tap, which I love that movie and need to rewatch it, actually. I really liked the main actor in it, Aiden. He, at pretty much every scene he was in, he did something like an expression or <laughs> something that made me at least giggle. So I really liked him and I don't know why I didn't like expect it to happen, but when stuff got real in the movie and they really did what they were setting out to do, you know, um, it, I was like, Oh man, that, this is not funny. <laughs> like, that is not funny at all to me. And so it was, it took a while to recover from that for me. And it was like, the party was kind of funny. And then I thought what happened to the main character in the, in the very, very end, how he was reported on the news, which I won't spoil, but that obviously made me laugh. <laughs> So overall, I, I definitely thought there were some funny elements to it. And if you like a mockumentary type of movie, I think it's worth giving it a shot. But it's dark. I would just give a warning. It's dark. Yes. <laughs> it's very dark. And that really, I mean, I, I say it's a five for me. So it's kind of in the middle for me, just because there were like really funny moments and moments where I was like, yeah. I could like I had to not watch. Like I put my hand in front of my eyes for some part. <laughs> There's Nikki for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm sure other people will. I mean, it's obviously just a movie, right? It's not like it was real. So, um, but was that's, it? Was yeah, it? That, yeah, I don't, think, I, I don't think most serial killers would want to, you know. A f- film crew following him. right i know i mean that was just absurd to begin with but you know it's the whole po- the point so it was especially for an indie film i think it was pretty decent all right chris we'll go to you so spaz basically took all the wind out of my sails by, yeah, uh, fucker. Uh, by u- utilizing <laughs> utilizing my movie that i was going to make as the crux of my comparison so like he said and butchered horribly um oh behind God. behind the mask <laughs> The Rise of Leslie Vernon was a 2006 horror mockumentary that I really, really, really enjoy. There's a lot of similarities with this film. Obviously, different plots. This one being more so leaning into serial killers. The other one being more in the fantasy serial killer realm. Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, etc. I think it's already kind of been mentioned. But yeah, I, overall, I would recommend this film if you are a fan of real dark comedy with a little bit of horror aspects i i don't want to give it a horror title because to me it wasn't scary it was more funny the cat scene got me i'm not gonna lie <laughs> yes <laughs> that was so good it really uh, was <laughs> now, like i did i i had a good handful of like laugh like out loud like chuckles the cat scene basically any scene that jack was in like I don't know. The fish selling scene would like made me laugh when he threw the fish into the bag. <laughs> like I watched it. Yeah, and I, it, good. it just yeah. got me. I don't know. I, it was, it, but overall it kind of ebbed and flowed when it was on, it was on and I enjoyed it, but there were times where it really like lulled. If the pacing was just a, like a little bit tighter mm-hmm. in certain spots, 
I think it would just it would have just made it shine. Not to say that it's a like it's a bad movie. There's just parts where you know it kind of winds down and so like really slow. And like I had a hard time like hanging on to the plot. And the plot is pretty thin on purpose. You know, you're just kind of supposed to be like a bystander in this whole thing playing out. So overall, I would definitely recommend it to those that have seen Behind the Mask, you know, that like dark comedy. Behind the Mask definitely leans more, very much more so into the horror aspect, whereas this one is very much to me, like a, like I said, a dark comedy, a black comedy. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, some of the humor is very dry. I, I like that. It makes me laugh. So overall, I would give it like a 5.5. It's definitely good. I recommend it if you're fans of that genre. And if you're not, I think you might struggle a little bit. Yeah. Dana and I struggled the same thing. We're just like, is it really a horror? I don't Cause it was, it was just, a, it was a very, very dark comedy for sure. But mm-hmm. there was, it, it didn't really kind of scratch that horror itch, you know, that I was expecting in a way, but. Right. There was nothing in there that made it like a quintessential, like, oh, this is horror. Boom. Mm-hmm. Boom. This, this part, this, this plot, this whatever scene. It's horror. Like, was it graphic at times? Certainly. But I mean, half the time I was laughing. It was more, I would say for me, like not scary, but like shock. I was like, ah, gosh. (laughs) Yeah. Like they (laughs) they had a little bit of like shock and awe. I mean, yeah, for me, it didn't surprise me. I, I, and props to whoever did the the practical effects. I think they did a banger job. Yeah. I wouldn't know. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) No, I think like, yeah, like a lot of like the stuff that did like uh, the eye scene, I thought was well done. But yeah, there was nothing in there that made me on edge or I was like, oh, this is a pivot. To me, this is a dark comedy. I mean, that's kind of like saying Shaun of the Dead is a horror movie because it has zombies. I mean, people will argue that it is because it has zombies. I have a very hard time justifying that. I got you. That's, that's a good that's a good comparison. Carrie, would you like to go next? I would be happy to. And a lot of my sentiments kind of match the others. Definitely pacing issues. A little slower, especially in the beginning. But I remember, so just, you guys know this, but for listeners, I have been very out of it recently. So I remember, (laughs) Tim, you sent the link and I clicked it. I thought you were making me watch Knives Out because the cover of the movie looks exactly like the Knives Out one. And I was so confused (laughs) by what we were, I was just like, what is happening right now? And then I'm like, oh, okay. So I click in. Yeah, I don't know. So I've never, I don't think I've really watched like a horror mockumentary before. Like, I'll be honest, I think it was a little new for me. Probably the closest one to it I've seen like dark comedy wise would be like just drop dead gorgeous. I just have not seen that many. So it was definitely different. It kind of gave me a what we do in the shadows vibe a little bit too, which was kind of <laughs> funny. There, there were definitely like a few problems, you know, in, in terms of like pacing, but overall not so bad. I liked the weird like narcissistic glamorization of you know the serial killer obviously that was kind of i don't know it was kind of funny because everyone's like i don't know if that would happen i'm like this is so 2022 like i actually kind of like enjoyed that aspect of it i don't know (laughs) um i guess i'm kind of looking at this as an indie mockumentary too right like for me pleasantly surprised in that sense so yeah i'm gonna go with a like a solid five i think for this one in their information they sent over to me they kind of highlight the runtime, the genre, the synopsis of the film, and then inspiration and comparisons. They have the office listed and then what we do in the shadows. So you're dead on. That's kind oh, of. Oh, really? Oh, that makes me some feel their, so happy. Yeah. Okay. Their cool. approach went. So for sure. I can and, definitely see the hints of uh, what we do in the shadows. Yeah. Yeah. And I was reminded of The Office with like the style of filming. So I almost mentioned that. That's really funny that they <laughs> included both of those. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was more of a mockumentary like The Office, not like a like like a regular documentary you would watch. It's just very much like a. It relied time. on expressions from people yeah. looking at the camera, like mm? <laughs> what just <laughs> happened? <laughs> Absolutely, Dana. How about you? All right, I'm sure you're going to help me out with this a little bit as we had a very detailed discussion earlier. <laughs> Overall, I don't know what I was expecting. I was just kind of like, okay, let's do this. I definitely laughed out loud in the beginning of this movie quite a few times, which I can actually say that does not normally happen for me when I'm watching most movies. And then it got really dark really fast. That being said, I was trying to predict the twist long before it happened and ended up being right right where it was at, which I was a little bummed out by that. But at the same time, I didn't mind watching it unfold either. Um, I thought it was decent. I still don't think that it necessarily hit the horror genre at all. I didn't like, didn't hate it. Didn't particularly say, oh, like that's the best movie I've ever seen. So I'm going to give it a a solid five as well. So very similar to Dana. I cannot tell you the last time I watched a film and laughed out loud. 
I, 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 I normally just like, huh, that's funny. Uh, but this, there were several moments that I found myself laughing, especially at the very beginning when they're you know, showing like the news broadcast and it's, it takes itself very serious and all of a sudden it jabs you with, with a, a comedic line that just kind of gets you out of nowhere. Like the one news anchor saying, because when it comes to murder, someone always ends up getting killed. It's like, it's just like the most random, obvious thing that just had me just laughing out loud because it just like, no kidding. But that's so much of this film just had like a serious kind of tone to it. And all of a sudden a jab of comedy, which I thought worked really, really well at the very beginning of this film. Um, the, when they're playing guess who serial killer, it's like, <laughs> yeah, is it a white right. guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was good. It's like, yeah. that was, that was great. Uh, you know, they, I know they probably spent some time putting that game together just for this one joke and it, it hit and it was hilarious. I love the or moment the where they're, yeah, the goose is like, I need to go kill a goose or a swan. Kill a swan. A swan and the, the goose is really aggressive or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I got bit by a goose. Like, oh gosh. That was great. Um, I love the, the scene in the movie theater where he's like, sometimes I just want to, I, I like to picture who I want to stab and the guy, he just turns his <laughs> back. He's just like, so it's like, you know, getting all excited and he turns around. It's just those kind of things I thought worked very well for the film and they all happened pretty early on. And then uh, another scene where they, they get like the retractable knives. They're just stabbing each other. Oh yeah. (laughs) That was really funny. (laughs) The uh, identical twins going at it was hilarious. Um, (laughs) He's like into them. He's like, what constitutes an orgy? Like, that, that whole scene, <laughs> that, I will say that that did make me laugh. It's like, I mean, there's only like, so that'd be three of us. Well, that's a threesome. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, and then they just, they just totally shut him down. And I was yeah. like, oh man. The car scene um, too was pretty funny. Like that. <laughs> was. That really got me. I love how he goes to chloroform and immediately just smacks his hand. Yeah, he just, the way he smacks it away, it's really funny. I I guess he got chloroformed by the guy or something because he was like, he got choked out by the guy. I won't won't lie, though. I think one of my favorite parts, and I didn't talk about it earlier, is the music video for Cannibal Death. Oh, that was funny, yes. As as, as somebody that listens to, like, like, any of the people on this podcast can tell you I am a primarily a metalhead. So watching them like make fun of like black metal and like doing like the like the symphonic and then shredding on the witches group. <laughs> yes, like that was funny. It, it reminded me so much. I mean, and they do it on purpose, but like yeah. um 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 I'm gonna blank on the name. Necro Goblicon. Um Oh crap, there's a band out there that does the similar stuff. Um and it is so reminiscent of what they did. Insert band name here. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's. I was right. It's Necro Goblin. So yes, like Necro Goblin Con. I'll roll in the one. I'm probably butchering that name, but anyways, <laughs> I just wanted to. I, I wanted to give them props for the entire <laughs> Cannibal Death March music video because. <laughs> That was phenomenal. I, also, I wrote that down because it was so yeah. great. I, yeah, when I saw that, I was I immediately thought of, oh God, Chris gonna love this. Yep, <laughs> and I did. <laughs> it's, oh, that was really funny. Yeah, I mean, it leans so hard in the the fact that they're making this on a budget, and so the obviously the graphics were just very, you know, not good on purpose. And I love the fact they have like. The witch burning to the tree. There's people walking in the background, just going about their day in the park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a guy with a dog, just like looking. Yep. So also, I mean, <laughs> sorry, I was just oh, going to mention the the part where they're practicing like with weapons and <laughs> with the back, he, like is almost kills the guy. That really got me. <laughs> it's like. Oh my gosh. I love that he's going along this whole movie just like, we're, I, this isn't yoga, but I'm just here for it, I guess. I know, <laughs> yeah. right. When are we practicing yoga? Um, yeah. So, I mean, we, we just rattled off a bunch of funny moments of this film that I was truly laughing about. And and that's that's kind of what I, I liked about it was the fact it was just serious, serious, serious. And all of a sudden, jab, here's a, a comedic moment. But then, as you were saying, kind of the pacing. So I love the fact that the whole music video was in there, but... It was the whole music video. 
right. <laughs> um, yes. And then the, the scene where they're like interviewing different people that just, it dragged on really long. Yes. Um, some of the moments were funny, but that it just, it was a lot, you know, and even though this film was just under an hour and a half, it, it felt longer than that. I guess yes. maybe it was just the pacing kind of, it slowed it down for me, but I, you know, some of that I think kind of leans into part British comedy, part mockumentary style, just kind of has lots of scenes in there. So I, I gave it some grace there. And the fact it was an indie film, I, the fact this is a directorial debut, this is producers, their first time producing a film. The acting in it was, was really well done. I think every character kind of portrayed who they were and it was just, I don't know. It was fun from that regard. And I thought they did a decent job in it, but again, pacing and some of the things it, it, it did drag on a little bit. Oh, and one more scene. I got to mention it when they're doing the party celebration and uh, Aiden's trying to make it all about him. Cause he's the brain, yeah. you know, even though he didn't do anything um, when he pulls the popper to celebrate and everyone's just standing yes. there. Yes. It was so <laughs> just, good. <laughs> just staring at him. Like, what are you talking about? Something that I didn't notice at first, but uh, noticed after the fact is Norman is standing there, but the balloon's like right in front of his face. And then he just hits it out of the way. Just, I don't know, just like those little things where they just purposely positioned a balloon just to be just floating in front of his head when they're all just staring at him. Just, I don't know. It's just funny, funny scene where everyone's just wondering why, why he's celebrating this great victory when he literally had no part of it. But anyway, there, there are definitely funny moments and this film shined when it was being funny, I think. And I, I was, it was great when it went dark, 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 funny because it caught you off guard and it kept it lighter. But then towards, I think the second half of the film, it, the comedy kind of went away for the most part. And it, like you guys were mentioning the the commentary about the obsession with the serial killer and the fact that they immediately gave this, this, you know, so what do they call him? The, um, the pop-up van killer or something. <laughs> so they, they already, they branded him as a serial killer, gave him this name. And then, you know, just, I don't know it. The obsession with serial killers, obviously everyone remembers the killers and the victims. Nobody really knows, you know, it's just, I think they, great commentary on that and, you know, kept it lighthearted in that regard. But um, I, I'm going to come in with a six because of what they were able to pull off on an indie budget. First time doing this, like everything for like the visuals, the setting, you know, the, I thought the sound was great. The music was good. Cinematography wise. I thought it was great. For, you know, it captured that mockumentary style and it, it looked like in many ways, like you guys were saying, like the office, it didn't look like a, indie film in that regard. It looked just very similar style to the office. So I, I think they did a good job with that, but I am going to rewatch that cannibal death March music video because that's, um, uh, that's a classic yeah, I'm gonna, now. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to interject and props to them for doing it. If you look up cannibal death March, there's an Instagram that redirects to when the screaming starts, but not only that, Amazon music has burned the witch as an actual track to listen. To. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, I like Nick, Nicky's like Nicky's like ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I thought I, the video was really funny, like what they did with the guitar, and <laughs> but it was like, long. It was a long part of it. I was like, so what's going on? I, you just accept it. <laughs> like basically, they encapsulated yeah. like every black doom metal bands and music videos. I mean, don't get me wrong, I listen to those bands, but some of those music videos are just like that. And don't get like like Dima Borgir is a shining example and i only expect maybe spaz to slightly know that band name yeah. in this entire group Ozfest. Oh, yep <laughs> <laughs> but then yeah then at the very end when they're doing the post credit scenes all of a sudden it jumps right back to the comedy and some of the the scenes that they were showing were hilarious like the our yogi oh yeah that was a good one where he where, he's like i made a big mistake <laughs> <laughs> he finally he finally founds the girl that he's pining over and she's like this i made a big mistake she opened her mouth <laughs> <laughs> that's really good her laugh yeah. everything was just you just see the uh uncomfortableness <laughs> of it all it was just that was a great moment you know and then uh jack's stand to his incognito stand he just puts a cardboard paper over his name uh to change it, it was just, oh, right yeah. to just dave yeah to dave <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah it some see we can recall these funny moments and laugh about it um but I just wish there was more comedy throughout. And I think it, it did its best there. Uh, so with that, I still recommend this film. I think if anyone's interested in a, um, 
some quirky, funny moments. Uh, that mockumentary style with some some good jab, no pun intended, bits of comedy. I think it's it's definitely there. But our average score it pr- comes pretty close to IMDb of a five point four. So, so I think overall we're all like, yeah, you should check it out if you get an opportunity to. Especially I, I for one, always support indie wherever I can, whether it's a indie movie, podcast, music, uh, Indiana Jones. Give it, Indiana Jones, <laughs> give them a fourth. chance. <laughs> Except that didn't exist. That did not come yeah. out yet. <laughs> it kind of reminds me now that I think about it of um, Tucker and Dale versus Evil, where it was like really, I don't know if that's the right movie title, but it is. <laughs> there was there were so many solid funny parts, but by the end it did sort of like it dragged a little bit. But I think what I liked more about that is that the murder scenes were more funny than yeah. these ones <laughs> like and maybe that's what this is missing like if those were more comical in some way then maybe it would have been it's college kid blood i don't know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we had a doozy of a day <laughs> <laughs> like the bees when he's running with the <laughs> chainsaw anyways yeah dana and i did mention that it was sim- that, that kind of a vein that reminded us of Dale and Tucker for sure. But all right, 5.4 for our average watch. Still recommend it. So go check out When the Screaming Starts if you get an opportunity to do so. Support these guys. Obviously, they worked very hard on it. It looks very well done. And it's got some great, great comedic moments that I'll think about and still laugh. And a great music video that I will share as well. So again, special shout out to Jared and team. Thanks so much for sharing this film with us. It was great to be able to preview this film. And I hope it does well for you guys because acting wise, you guys killed it. It was great. With that, thank you for listening to On Second Watch. Make sure to follow us on all the social medias. But again, if you want to request us to watch a movie of your choice or pick a category for our Spin the Wheel, go to oswpodcast.com. That's where you can see all our stuff, everything that we have to offer. It's there. So until next time, I guess this kind of officially kicks off our Halloween season, guys. So uh, happy Halloween. And we'll see you next movie review. <laughs> I'm a whore. <laughs> <laughs>